Hello everyone and welcome to Geeks of Geeks. In this video we are going to see the problem to find the next greater element. So in this problem you will be given an array and you have to print the next greater element for every element in the array. What is the next greater element? So next greater element for a given element x is the first greater element on the right side of x in the array. Elements for which no greater element exists, consider the next greater element as minus 1. So, uh, let's see. So, uh, if you have this example here, so uh, you have this input array 4, 5, 2, and 25. So, the uh, next greater element for 4 is actually 5. So, for the 4, it is 5. Then coming to the 5, the next greater element cannot be 2. So it is 25 because 25 is greater than 5. So next greater element for 5 is 25. Then coming to the element 2 here. So the next greater element is obviously 25. So the next greater element in our output is also 25 for the 2. Finally for the 25 as it is the last element of the array. So there is no element towards its right. So the next greater element will be minus 1. So uh, it's also mentioned here that for any array, rightmost element always has the next greater element as minus 1. Okay, so for any array which is sorted in decreasing order, all elements have the next greater element as minus 1. So if the array is sorted in decreasing order, so starting from the biggest element to the smallest element, so whenever you try to find the next greater element, there will be no next greater element towards the right side. So that is why uh, for all those elements, the next greater element will be minus one. Uh, let's see another example. So we are given this array 13, 7, 6 and 12. Uh, here the next greater element for 13 is minus one because all of the next three elements are actually smaller than 13. Then coming to 7, the next greater element will be 12. You see 12 here. Coming to 6, next greater element will be obviously 12. So you see uh, 12 here. Then finally, next greater element for 12 will be minus 1 because it is the rightmost element. Okay, so now let's look at uh, the solution so we will be discussing two methods to solve this problem the first one will be the simple solution and the second one will be using stacks so in the simple approach we basically use two loops the outer loop picks all the elements one by one the inner loop looks for the next greater element for the element picked by the outer loop if a element if a greater element is found then the element is printed as next otherwise minus one is printed so this is basically a brute force algorithm so uh, let's see the code so you are given this function print ng, uh, next greater element which has an argument the array and its size so i have discussed we will be running two loops In the outer loop uh, will start from i equal to zero to n minus one and it will basically uh, run for all the elements and then you initialize the next as minus one and then in the inner loop you are actually running the inner loop from i plus one uh, till n minus one because uh, you want to find the next greater element so we start from the right of the current element and then we check if we find that uh, the uh, array of i is smaller than array of j so we find whenever we find the first greater element we update the value of next from minus one to that element and then we break out of the loop so we break out of this loop and then we finally print that uh, next greater element for area is actually next if uh, no element uh, passes this if condition that means you didn't find any greater element then the value of next remains minus one and thus you print minus one here as uh, so for the driver method, uh, you have the input array, then you calculate its size, and then you just call the print an extra element by passing the array and its size. 
So the time complexity of this solution is order of n square because you have a nested loop and uh, you are basically for each element you are uh, iterating over the whole, ar whole array, whole of the array towards its right again. So the time complexity is order of n square. Now we will see a second method wherein we will be using stacks. So uh, by using this method, we will be reducing the time complexity of a solution to order of n. So let's see. So what we do is we'll maintain a stack and we first of all push the first element to the stack. So this is a compulsory step that we need to do that we first of all push the first element onto the stack. Now in the second step, what we do is we pick rest of the elements one by one and follow the following steps in loop. So then after this, we'll have a loop on the remaining elements. What we'll do is uh, we mark the current element as next. So whatever element uh, you are processing uh, from this loop, you are actually marking that cu current element as the next. Then you check that if stack is not empty, then you pop an element from the stack and compare it with the next. So if we consider an intermediate situation wherein you have few elements on the stack and now you have a, an element next, so you keep popping out elements from the stack and you compare it with next. If next is greater than the popped element, uh, that would mean that the uh, next uh, is actually the next greater element for the popped element because the popped element would have been pushed on due to the stack before. And now you are having the element next, which uh, comes after that uh, element in the array. And that element is the uh, is actually greater than the popped element. So that means that it is the next greater element. So what we do is we uh, keep popping from the stack while the popped element is smaller than the next and next becomes the uh, next greater element for all such popped elements. Now, if the next is smaller than the popped element, then we push the popped element back, uh, uh, back into the stack. Uh, once we have done this and we have printed uh, all the elements which have the next greater element, then what we do is we pop out all the elements from the stack uh, and print minus one as the next greater element for them. So whichever element does not have a, a next greater element within the stack. So for all such elements, the next greater element will be minus one. And that's what we do because we'll have uh, only that elements remaining in the stack after we are done with step two. So uh, this algorithm is not so simple, but uh, once we see an example, uh, it will it will become more clear. So uh, we have a walkthrough here wherein you have these four elements and uh, this is the uh, stack. So what we'll do is we first of all push four onto the stack. That is the first step. Then what we do is uh, now the next is actually uh, five, which is the current element which we are processing. So we uh, push four out of the stack and we compare five with it. So because five is greater than four, so we'll print that five is the next greater element for four. And then we push five back to the stack. So we print next greater element for four is five. And then we push the five onto the stack. Now we uh, come here. So next is two and we compare five with two as two is actually smaller than five. So we push two also onto the stack. Now uh, next uh, becomes 25. So now 25 is greater than two and five both. So we first of all pop out two, then we'll print that next greater element for two is 25. Then we pop out five. We compare it with 25. Five is smaller than 25. So we again print that uh, next greater element for five is 25. And, and then finally we push 25 onto the stack. So you see next greater element for two is 25. Next greater element for five is 25. And then we have pushed 25 onto the stack. Now we are done with the uh, step two. 
there are no more elements in this uh, array here. So what we do is uh, for the remaining elements, we print that next greater element for the remaining elements is minus one. So for the 25, we'll print that the next greater element for 25 is minus one. Uh, I hope that uh, this is now clear with the help of example. Uh, and now let's proceed to the code. So here you see that uh, you have a structure stack uh, which has the top and the integer array. Now we see some uh, utility methods. So basically the uh, basic function which are needed by stack. So we have the push function here wherein you are checking if uh, element can be pushed or not. If it cannot be pushed, you uh, print a stack overflow error. Otherwise, you actually push the element. So you increment the value of top and you place that element X onto the stack at the position top. Note that uh, you get got the X as the argument in the push method. Then you have the standard pop method wherein you first of all check that if element can be popped. So if the top is not equal to equal to minus one, uh, then you say, uh, then you actually proceed. If it is equal to minus one, then you say that stack is, uh, that it's a stack under flow condition. Uh, so if it is not a stack under flow condition, then you uh, actually pop out an element. So by popping out the element, we mean that we just reduce the value of the top and then we just uh, return the popped element, basically the temp. We have another utility function which is is empty where which checks that if the array is empty or not uh, which it actually compares just the top of the uh, stack uh, that if it is minus one then you return true otherwise you return false so coming to the uh, main uh, function which uh, which will be implementing the algorithm which we just discussed so print nge next greater element which takes as an argument the array and its size uh, now you have some initializations i equal to zero structure stack uh, s and the top is initialized with minus one then you have the element and the next so first of all as the first step of the algorithm we push the first element onto the stack that is what we are doing here we pass in the reference to the stack and the first element in the array now we do is we iterate for the rest of the element so we start a loop from i equal to one till n minus one uh, we initialize the value of next as array of i so the next element becomes array of i and now we check that if uh, stack is not empty then what we do is we actually uh, pop out an element out of the stack then if the popped element is smaller than the next then we print the pair and keep popping while the elements are smaller and also the stack is not empty so what we do is uh, while element is smaller than next uh, we keep printing the pair and we also keep checking that if uh, stack has become empty then we just break otherwise we again keep popping out the element so we keep popping the element we come here we check the condition if the condition holds true we again come here if we print the element then we again pop and we keep on going uh, doing this once uh, the once the stack becomes empty or the element is actually greater than the next, then what we do is uh, we push the uh, element uh, back to the stack. So whatever element we popped here, we push that element onto the stack. So uh, onto the back to the stack. Once we have done that, then we push the uh, next onto the stack. So uh, as all the elements have to go to the stack at least once. So uh, we push this element onto the stack and the next iteration will again be following the step two. Uh, finally, uh, this is the step three wherein you check that uh, while uh, stack is not empty, you keep popping out the elements and you keep printing those elements. Uh, so you have the element here which you just popped and you print the value of next as minus one. So all the remaining elements in the stack finally will have the uh, next as minus one. So the uh, driver method remains the same. 
uh, as in the previous uh, exam uh, previous uh, method which was using the uh, uh, nested arrays now coming to the time complexity the time complexity is order of n uh, the worst case occurs when all the elements are sorted in decreasing order uh, if the elements are in decreasing order then every element is at most processed four times so once when they are pushed onto the stack once they are popped from the stack when the next element is being processed then they are pushed back to the stack because next element is smaller and then finally in the step three uh, they will be again popped out of the stack so at most they, uh, each element will be processed four times so that is four n times for the whole of the array which uh, will lead us to the time complexity of order of n so we discussed uh, two methods uh, in method one the time complexity was order of n square and in the second method using stacks we had the time complexity of order of n that is all for this tutorial thank you very much